Welcome back to our learning video series for the new Recon LiDAR systems. My name is Gilbert, and I'm gonna be your guide today as we explore capturing data with the new Recon LiDAR systems. In this video, we're gonna be taking to the skies and capturing data from the Recon LiDAR system that we will later process into a point cloud. We've already planned our UAV mission, and now we're gonna go over the workflow for making sure the data captured by your Recon system is as accurate as possible. Along the way, we'll share some best practices so that you can have a painless experience on your first recon missions. Acquisition is a critical part of the workflow for the recon series, and getting this right means optimizing the amount of time spent in the field and the time spent processing your data back in the office. Additionally, following this guide carefully will ensure the highest quality data possible with your recon lighter. If this is your first time you will be flying your recon system, then there is a bit of preparation involved. We're eager to walk you through it, so let's get started. Before we can get in the air with our DJI M300, we need to first install some necessary equipment for the recon series. First up is our antenna kit. This single antenna kit helps the recon series understand where it is in space while it flies. Installation is simple. It just requires you to tighten the four thumb screws into the proper spot on top of the M300. Next, we need to upgrade the M300 with our integration kit. This kit enables the M300 to properly carry the recon payload while making sure harmonic vibrations don't affect the sensor. This upgrade is a little more complicated, but still very simple to get installed. Remove the vibration isolators from the original mount and install the upgrades in each proper place like so. The workflow for capturing data with your recon system is efficient enough that we can perform all the final steps here in the field. First, let's connect our payload to the sky port on the aircraft. Simply line up the white and red dots on the sky port, then twist the payload until it locks into place. The sky port will provide power to the payload from the aircraft, so no need to connect the power to the auxiliary port. Take this time to make sure your Wi-Fi antenna, USB storage, and GPS antenna are properly connected. Before we can power on our drone and recon system, we need to make sure our base station is set up. All our LiDAR systems require a base station to complete the PVK workflow. At a minimum, this base station should be static and recording observations during the entire time we are conducting the LiDAR mission. That's all you need to know for now about the base station. Make sure it's recording the entire time you're flying and we'll need this data later when we head back to the office to start post-processing our point cloud information. Finally, we need to verify a few settings and check our storage capacity before we can take off. Let's get our drone set out and powered up. Once our drone is powered on and ready, we need to press the power button on our recon system. Just press it once quickly to power the system. You can tell it's fully powered once the three lights glow. Of course, if you're in a hurry, you can always skip these steps with the GUI and use the power button to begin capturing data manually. Simply tap the power button once and the boot light will flash between red and green to let you know that you are recording LiDAR data. 
To stop capturing data manually, simply tap the power button again and wait for the boot light to stop flashing. Now that our payload is powered on, we can log into the GUI and check a few final things before we start flying. To connect to the GUI, open your laptop or smartphone and connect to the Wi-Fi network from your payload. The password to the network on your recon system will be LiDAR and INS. Go ahead and open up your favorite web browser and navigate to the IP address for the GUI. That should be 192.168.12.1. From here, we can do a lot to the payload, but we're just gonna check a few things before we take off. First, have a look at the GNSS solution. It should show how many satellites are connected and before you take off, make sure this status is computed single. The last thing to check before takeoff is the storage remaining on the USB drive. Select the storage tab and you can quickly see the remaining storage capacity by checking the color of the storage indicator. Our indicator is showing green. That means we have plenty of space left. If this indicator is yellow for you, the USB drive connected is above 75% of its max capacity. When it turns red, that means 95% of the capacity has been used by other files. It's important to make sure your drive has enough space on it to complete the whole mission. Running out of space mid-air can result in the need to refly your mission to get a complete data set. If you're confident the data on the drive is not important and you need the space, you can erase the drive using the trash can button. You can also, from the screen, detach the USB drive if you wish to back up the files before erasing them. Now all that's left is to fly our mission we planned earlier. You can either start data capture from the power button, like we explained earlier, or from the status tab of the GUI, select Start under Data Recording. It's good practice to let the drone sit for at least 30 seconds before you begin taking off after you start the recording. This allows the instrument to settle and gives it a chance to acquire some static data that will make post-processing easier. Use this time to get yourself ready to fly, check your surroundings, and notify anyone necessary that you're about to take off. Don't forget to fly your kinematic alignment maneuvers. High velocity straight line in figure eight before and after your mission starts. Looks like our mission is complete. Time to land the drone and properly power off the payload. It's very important to stop recording and shut down the payload properly after your mission. The data you captured could become corrupted if you don't do this. Just like before we took off, give the system at least 30 seconds of static time after landing before you stop the recording. In this case, we simply press the power button once to stop the recording and we should see the boot light stop flashing. You could also log back into the GUI and stop the data recording that way. Once the recording is complete, we can power off the payload by holding the power button down for at least four seconds on the recon system. Now we are ready to power off the drone and head back to the office so we can begin processing the point clouds we just captured. Thanks so much for joining us today and we look forward to supporting you and your team during your journey into Aerial LiDAR. Please refer to our other videos in this series that will show you the complete recon workflow from mission planning to final point cloud export. This is Gilbert, signing off till next time.